Okay, thank you very much, Tony. Uh, so many people are just coming back in um, from the break. I've been asked to uh, uh, be somewhat provocative uh, and to be very short. So I'll try my best to, to make this something that will be uh, uh, quite concise. Um, I think there's a title in the agenda that calls from dreams to reality, and frankly, uh, from where I work at the Oulu University of Applied Sciences, this is very much uh, a dream at this stage. So the Oulu 20, uh, 2026 bid, uh, very exciting for what uh, us as a university and us as a city could potentially uh, get involved in. Um, and what I'd like to talk about for a few minutes is potentially what are some of the ways that we could turn this into reality? and basing that on some of the work that we do and potentially throwing some visions to this community uh, about trying to uh, mix some of the things that we've been hearing Stephen talk about. And frankly, where I feel this fits is, uh, Stephen mentioned three E's, and very much what I want to talk about now uh, is uh, the third E, which is the ecosystem part. So I think we've, we've uh, just been inspired uh, by some very interesting parts within the technology, and what I'd like to talk about more is this idea of the ecosystem. So how potentially do we all work together? What's possible? So what I'd actually like to focus on is how Oulu can potentially be something what I'm throwing out here as an interdisciplinary city. So interdisciplinary means all of us uh, come from different disciplines, and how can we potentially work together? So we have artists, we have educators, we have journalists, uh, we have uh, uh, city administrators. Um, how can we all potentially work together? So an example I'd like to start with is what we do at the Oulu University of Applied Sciences, and specifically where I work is something called the Oulu EduLab. Uh, this is connected to what's across the street, where you'll probably be spending some time this afternoon at Oulu Game Lab, similar model. Um, but what we do is we actually work uh, with a number of different partners uh, to develop prototypes specifically uh, in the ed tech uh, industry. Now, when we talk about ed tech, we talk about learning, but that can be very, very broad. It can be museums, it can be hospitals, it can be schools. Uh, so similar, uh, Stephen had his images of uh, uh, young people with, uh, with visors on. Uh, this, is, this is my attempt to have the image, but this is an example of how uh, some of our students at the university, which is the gentleman on the left, work with sco uh, school students from elementary and middle schools here in the city, uh, which is the young woman uh, with, the, um, with the headset on. And this is actually physically located uh, at Pietamon, which is the uh, science center here in Oulu. So what I wanted to have this is just to demonstrate how already there are examples of how interdisciplinary work is happening within the city. So the idea of having a place like Pietamon, working with the university, uh, and also working with the city, so for example, with SICU. But this doesn't have to stop there. Uh, for example, at EduLab, we're working with ULE. Um, so the idea of having one of our development teams building out um, uh, a learning game with ULE, for example, which is something we have right now. Um, but this also can expand to other areas. So for example, we have teams right now uh, potentially working on uh, uh, installations that you'll be able to see during the LUMO Festival in a few months. So this is a way that we'd like to describe uh, around a term that I want to throw to this community as co-creation. And this is something that I think probably is not new for a lot of you, uh, but very much something that I'd like to focus on and, and present to us as a challenge to see how we can co-create together. Now, moving beyond that from the inter interdisciplinary city into something then the interdisciplinary space. So as this challenge towards the 2026 20, bid, um, it is a reality that uh, loop that we have here in the city is going through uh, kind of a regeneration process. There's lots of potential uh, for actual physical spaces. Now, when you think first about museums, uh, this is probably the kind of thing you often think about. And so I don't know if anyone recognizes this place. Anyone, anyone know? So this is the Science Museum in London. So these uh, very kind of stoic, traditional buildings that you often think of as a museum. But I want to throw some things to you as possibilities. So, can you put your hand up if you think that this is a museum? Nobody here thinks that this is a museum. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's one person. Okay, for those of you who don't think it's a museum, what is this? Does anyone know what this is? Please, quickly. A disco. Yes, you are actually right. It is a dance club. 
So this is actually one of the earliest um, techno dance clubs in Italy in the 1970s. Um, but when you look at the space and what's actually potentially available, I would actually argue that I've been to some uh, science centers and museums that actually have physical spaces that look quite similar. Okay, here's another one. Does anyone know what this place is? Is this a museum? No. No? School. Yeah, it's a school. So actually, um, it's Hukelbauer School, which has just been recently built here in the city. Um, but what I would actually argue is I've also been to museums and I've also been to physical spaces where co-creation works that actually look physically like this, that aren't schools. So it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm saying uh, we should try to have elementary schools and discos put together, um, but actually, is that actually physically possible? So that you would actually have a place where you actually co-locate, so you would actually have elementary school children working in a facility in one part of the day that's safe and, and useful for them, and potentially having it as a disco or something for the 20-somethings uh, in a city in the evening that is potentially accommodating something for them in the potentially the same kind of facility. And that's useful for them. It's not an add-on. It's something that actually they need for what they do. So this is potentially the challenge that I'd like to throw to you. And what I'd like to, to, to leave with you is this idea for the 2026 bid is the 14-year-olds that we have right now, they are going to be young professionals when we are successful with this bid. And so in 2026, what potentially are they going to be doing and as, as young professionals for that particular bid and for the kind of activities that we expect in Oulu at that time? So that's what I wanted to throw to this group today. Thank you very much for your time. If you'd like to talk more about what we do, uh, certainly you can uh, talk with us or my colleagues, uh, Carolina Niemela, who's also here, uh, who works at EduLab, and also with our colleagues at uh, GameLab across the street. So thank you very much. <laughs>